we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the dojo. As always, I'm Ryu. He's Age. I got a little sidetracked there because coming off the reaction that we can't really post on YouTube because, you know, copyright stuff. But welcome back. Glad you're here again with us here to check out the second episode of ReZero Season 2. Just got through it. We have some things to talk about. Namely, how this dragon is now best girl, apparently, and uh, is going to be the new main character, and that's the end of it, right? <laughs> oh, man. But in all seriousness, some stuff definitely happened in this episode. They were Some stuff was being set up, and then the last, like, 45 seconds was just like, all right, bring, bring out the notebook. We got to take down all these things that happened in the last 45 seconds of the episode into the new uh, intro there. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second, since we're going to go in order. So we've got Subaru and Amelia leaving and heading back home with Rem. Had the nice little like goodbye moment and this the, the dragon moment, which that was that was comical. So we, we got new best girl. Um, yep, his face. But. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this now after those last 45 seconds. I'm just. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not mo not much really happened through most of the first part of this episode. Pretty much all of the like real anything that actually happened was pretty much entirely centered around that Beatrice conversation, and then the last like minute, minute and a half of the episode. Right. So <laughs> the the talking points we have in all in all seriousness here, even though the dragon thing is funny, and I, I couldn't help myself with that one. So first new thing we have here is where is New Maid? Uh, got got, got Subaru big... losing his mind, thinking that he's gonna have Amelia confess to him or something. He's already getting way ahead of himself. That's not happening right now. We got to pull the the limo driver just. Casually close the window on the driver, get out of our conversation <laughs> moment. That was pretty hilarious. I, I enjoyed that. Um, not not as rude as just, you know, pushing that button down and having the, the window slowly come up and close. But still, <laughs> still comical. I appreciate it. Just just get out of here. Can't, can't you see we're talking here? Get um, out of here, Mishima. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> he, he's not a real... He doesn't exist. Otto doesn't exist. Um... So, okay, here's one thing. Where, where's the town people? That's, that's a concern. Um, obviously, well, kind of a background concern. We don't know where everybody is. So, well, we know where they're supposed to be. They yeah, were we supposed, know where they're supposed to be. They were supposed but, to go and ram to the sanctuary, but no one's heard from Ram or the villagers since they left. Yeah, better thing to say would be what's going on with them. Sorry, not where are Maybe. they. But um, so we got what's going on with them. Uh, keep saying uh because I'm losing my mind. Sorry. So they get home. Otto takes the stuff back, and boom, new maid. Look at that. There she is. New so, maid, who this? Yeah, new maid. Who this? Uh. So I need to stop saying uh. So we found out that there's more races, I guess, in this because she was referred to as like half beast or something by Beatrice, she, right? She's She's a demi human, which we've known demi humans exist. They're basically they're just they're demi humans. They're a cross between human and some other species. Like half elves are technically demi humans because they're half human, half elf. Right. Yeah, I just I didn't remember if they covered that a lot in the first season, other than like, yeah, there's elves and stuff, but I didn't know if there were like actual like more demi humans kinda of like, you know, her. Well, it was, it was covered, but very briefly during the very beginning. Like, one of the first things he ends up doing is he accidentally walks into a demi-humans only, uh, like, bar slash restaurant. And immediately gets thrown out. Oh, yeah. yeah that whole anime binge just kind of bled together. So, I minor details that I can't remember. I'm sorry. And you weren't here to write them down. So, I blame you for not being here months ago. Think about that. Anyway, producer not being here for that aside, we have new maid, parent demi human. She, she did. I, I didn't know if they were going to go like, oh, she randomly remembers Rem, but obviously, you know, the only one that I, at this point that I think may remember her is uh, Roswald, 
because of Roswaldiness. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, I... he might have some things that involve stuff that allow him to, you know, circumvent certain magic and whatever. I'm pretty sure he'd remember her. Um... It's, well, it's possible that he'd remember her based on my own speculations. I don't really know exactly, but it's it is possible. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it now. He'll for some reason I I, I don't know enough about the series and you know just general anime stuff in general to like say oh it, it could be like one of these things again or something. So I'll, I'll say he knows. I'll, I'll put some some fake money on that. <laughs> We'll do a million dollars butt challenge if I get it wrong or something. <laughs> I'm fairly confident that he'll know. The thing that's uh, I find questionable is whether or not he'll let other people know that he knows. Even if we wanted to understand what he's talking about, you know. <laughs> but he doesn't know that we know that he knows that we know. And it just, oh, it's going to be that Friends episode all over again. But so new maid, that's cool. Um. She seems like a reasonable character. Uh, hopefully she gets some, you know, some sort of character progression other than she's just there and she's training uh, the new maid who's still... Petra. Yeah, she's still going to train Petra to, you know, try to steal Subaru away as, you know, third imposter, fourth girl, or whatever is going on <laughs> at this point. I don't know how many of them there are at this point. Because, you know, dragons have entered the picture, so it anything's game, I guess got you know sleeping beauty not real girl not fake main girl third imposters seventh imposters mounts I, I don't know where we're at anymore it's it's crazy <laughs> so so they had that whole introduction with her which was fine it's just story set up not much really to say there they had that whole scene with them you know talking about what's going on it's fine and then the next major thing which happens is the whole Beatrice conversation, which there she is. Uh, there I go again. So the one thing that came out of this is she made it sound, one, she made it sound like people were using her like a tool and she's not very appreciative of that. So kind of like a la Jin maybe from Ruby, like she People just use her to answer questions, and she's not a fan of that. Two, when she hands her the, uh, what was that book called? The Gospel. The Gospel. Uh, she very distinctly says something about Beta Goose leaving her behind, as in either she obviously knows who he is, and then mentioning the whole witch factor. You can, you can just go ahead and, I know you're going to do it, just go ahead and put witch factor up there on the wall. Just, yeah, just go ahead. I just yeah, There she goes. So witch factor is now on the wall up there with... Yeah, there she goes. Up there with Sin, Archbishop. So witch factor is going to be a big deal. One way or another. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... I don't know exactly how it's going to play out, but I'm pretty sure something along the lines of your speculation at the end of the episode is correct, where it's going to be a thing of, like, someone always has to represent the Sin. Whether or not it is specifically a witch or one of these sin archbishops, just someone always has to represent the sin, and the power is just going to jump to someone else. Mm -hmm. So we've got that, and then the majority of the rest of it was just kind of you know standard anime, just whatever. Just they not really filler. Just that's how the episode progressed. So after that whole conversation, and she gets mad and kicks one Subaru out. <laughs> one thing to bring up, though. Something that I actually made note of in the first season. In all of the battle with Battle Geese and just the whole like invasions of the manor and stuff like that, Beatrice was totally missing. She like right. never she like never came up. She was never it was never really brought up that she was attacked or that she came out to defend the manor or anything like that. Right. She so, was just more or less totally exempt from that whole scenario. So you could assume that if they knew each other that he wouldn't bother going to the mansion to do anything that involved her because reasons. Well, he does attack the manor in some of the timelines. It's just, once again, Beatrice is totally like just absent from there. Like There's no signs of her defending the manor. There's no signs of the library ever getting invaded by them. Right. 
So it could be like She's some weird, gone. like kind of like ceasefire, no, you know, no hostility between them because reasons that we don't know yet. Anyway, so there's that. And then we have, if I can find it, man, there's Petra being trained and she, she just wants to be around Subaru. So, of course, she's going to apply for the job. Shocking. <laughs> he walks out of that room and boom, new mate again. I don't know how he's going to handle that, but he seems oddly happy about it. Shame for shame. <laughs> So then this, she gets handed this medallion, pendant, necklace of power, whatever you want to call it, which is obviously important in some way, and based on how the episode played out, I get the feeling that A, she wasn't supposed to take it off, and B, Subaru was not supposed to be the one that ever held this thing, so that's why he ended up with the witch in... What I can only assume is his mind, but for all we know, he could really be somewhere else. He could have been yeeted into, you know, elsewhere, for all we know. My interpretation of that is the yes, it is he is being. It is just the that whole, like, field with the witch is just in his mind, and that it's somehow he's being more or less just messaged through his curse. Right. And... I'm not leaving out that she, like, pulled him somewhere, but it's far, far more likely that it's just all in his mind, and he's, like... He, he crossed some threshold chasing that little elf girl, and something happened. Like, something triggered. A uh, flag triggered. Oh, no, it was when he en he entered the, uh... This, this, that he temple. Entered. He entered the forest temple in the Lost Woods. <laughs> yeah, and he's gonna fight Phantom Ganon. Sorry. <laughs> You'd think I just watched this. I remember everything about it, but no. Just, no. It's, you expect me to remember stuff? Are you crazy? I'm gonna, gonna have to watch this a couple more times in, during the week just so that I, I can remember stuff like, you know, simple stuff like names and, and faces. Maybe tertiary things if I get to it. It's not happening. I, I barely remember Subaru's name. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, there is... Uh, speaking of the little elf girl... Uh... There is some things when we get to that ending that I want to talk about. But in the meantime, yeah, there's the whole thing with the necklace. And then he gets teleported away for whatever reason. So, yeah, I, I think he does get, when he grabs it, he gets tell he's at least outside the stagecoach. He, yeah, he's he outside gets, the vehicle. He gets teleported away by the necklace. Um... That is pretty much guaranteed. I have some thoughts about who this is, but like I said, we'll get there when we actually get to the ending. As far as the necklace goes, it's basically just, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's something along the lines of... I don't know if... No, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, okay, so I'm pretty sure this was mostly a setup... Subaru and Otto were never meant to make it to the sanctuary. Yeah, I mean, so what I got out of what the new maid said, and don't expect me to remember her name after the first episode, you're crazy. I know you probably do, which is fine, but this is just me. <laughs> that env or that that letter she pulled out when she said to herself, you know, she did everything she was supposed to, and now it's up to Amelia. I immediately thought to myself, test, and I think I said it when we were watching it. So yeah, you did. Amelia is being tested, and that's why. I get the feeling that she was never supposed to take that necklace off because that was like part of her test for the sanctuary. And she yeah. was probably supposed to go in alone and do things that involved stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm fairly certain based on the context of the whole letter and the fact that Frederica was actually more or less guiding the whole thing based off of the letter and it wasn't actually them really doing their own thing. Uh, and then what the fact that the Amulet ended up teleporting Subaru is I'm fairly certain it was just meant to be she wears the amulet going in the amulet teleports her away leaving Otto and Subaru out of the mess whereas Amelia then has to go into the sanctuary alone and something happens yep but now that's a uh, kind of 
been mucked up by uh, Subaru yet again. Mm-hmm. So Subaru has pulled a classic Subaru. I guess at this point, vintage, even. You could go use that as an adjective. So I guess that leads us to the end, because there wasn't a lot that really happened in this episode besides setup, but we still find a way to talk about it, because that's our job. We're talking heads, we're going to talk about it, we're going to analyze. So anyway, we found a way to, to pull out minutes, several minutes out of this. <laughs> but the, the part that happens in the last 45 seconds... You know, you get, you get this, which is a nice little backdrop. I, I like this scene. It's, you know, nice little umbrella with two chairs, table, you know, on the default Windows uh, desktop background. You know, they're somewhere in Wyoming. I, I don't know. That's usually where it is. I, I, I swear, like, when I drove through Wyoming one year, I literally looked out my window and I was like, that's the default Windows desktop background, like, from, like, Windows, like, whatever it was like the one before seven it was like vista like early like the late 90s 2000s ones like they, they all had that like just the rolling hills and the green and then the clouds and stuff mm -hmm. the stereotypical windows background if you don't if you guys don't know what i'm talking about you can google it it's right there i'm sure it's there it, it's probably still there on a lot of windows devices uh Besides just like the random like still shots you get when you log in of just like, here's the arch at Malta or here's some place in New Zealand or here's like the Eiffel Tower in Paris or whatever. But th this is exactly what this is. So, you know, it's, it's a nice scene. I like it. She's even got a chair for him and everything. I, I don't think he's going to sit down and join her for that spot of tea or, you know, witch's brew or whatever she may or may not be drinking. But we had this in the last like what is this like minute and 48 of the episode we're like so uh, uh we know that this was mostly set up so here's the the new intro for the season and all this freaking information and foreshadowing of characters to come okay thanks bye <laughs> she's literally just drinking a cup of straight witch factor right <laughs> well, little do we know that witch factor is just going to be like some new premium brand like coffee or something that we can just like put up here it's like you know what i only drink witch factor black you know <laughs> no cream no sugar witch factor black you know <laughs> you, you can't drink witch factor with any additives it's just straight witch factor if that's not enough product placement for them to do this i, I don't know what their you know pr <laughs> department's doing at this point they, they need to get out I'll, I'll do it myself i'll start selling witch factor <laughs> But yeah, so uh, the big curveball here is uh, it's not Satella. Yeah, not Satella. So that's that's the thing where I raised an eyebrow and I was like, I know I'm bad with names and that's going to be a running thing here in the dojo. Let's face it. But I know that wasn't her name when she said it. I was like, that's not the original witch's name. Subaru totally yelled some different name that started with an S. <laughs> Apparently this is Echidna, the Witch of Greed. Yes. Not Satella, the Witch of Envy, who we've been getting all the foreshadowing for. Just no, we're gonna just gonna. This is a totally different witch. Yeah, you need to clear witches uh, one through six before we get to Satella, that are apparently somehow still alive through Witch Factor or otherwise. So, like I was saying, I. But yeah, what the what mean... you, the thing you said at the end of the the, the reaction was. You know, go ahead with the yeah. The, go ahead, just I'll go get out of your way. I'm just gonna get completely out of your way. <laughs> the way this makes the most sense to me is the split personality idea, because as far as I'm aware, from my own conclusions and just what I know, between like having watched the first season a few times and having not read the manga myself, but talked with a bunch of people who have read the first season's manga. As far as I'm aware, the other witches were all dead. So, the way this makes most sense to me is that this is Satella. It's just, she has some form of split personality disorder of the other witches, and that this is just the echidna personality. Right. And it's not like we haven't seen um, split personality disorder due to, like, absorbing other beings in, like, other traditional media, you know. They, they, there was like Star Trek episodes about this that I've seen, you know, 
all kinds of other stuff where it doesn't happen all the time, but there's like a precedent for it. The big things for me really are just, as far as I'm aware, the other witches are supposed to be dead. And then also the fact that Echidna here looks like Satella, as far as we've been told. So either it's a split personality Satella, or the witches are still somehow alive, and just all the witches looked basically the same. Right. Which I, I pff, which based on is what I've possible. seen, it's I'd, possible, but I think it's more likely to be the split personality thing. Yeah, I'm thinking more split personality than them being alive, but without knowing more and just being able to like theorize about what which factor is other than the new hot drink coming to you live uh, in 2022, you know, look for it on the shelves. If they don't do it, it's they're they're missing out. I mean, it's got the name. It's got brand recognition. It's got the name. I mean, how do you not sell that as a freaking like, you know, energy drink or a coffee or something? You know, I want like partial credit for this if somebody else hasn't come up with it first <laughs> so joking aside about that you know depending on how the witch factor power magic whatever it is works in this world you know either their personalities have to still exist or they have there has to be individual witches for each thing at a time even if all the previous ones were like taken over by somebody else. Yeah. Once again, I, I feel like the witch factor thing is very much just going to be a, there always has to be a some representative of each of the sins. Just, it's a matter of how that's necessarily going to manifest. And what does that mean for the idea that, you know, Satella has all of them. Right. But yet we still have the Sin Archbishops who, according to Beatrice, do in some way, shape, or form directly connect to Witch Factor. Right. So we didn't really get any cues from the introduction of Greed and Gluttony that they were working for the same witch. You know, like if, if it's all her, you know, they didn't really... I don't, I'm pretty sure they didn't say anything about like their mistress or something like that. The thing with the witch cultists, yeah, we haven't really seen any of them, apart from that brief introduction to greed and gluttony, apart from Beetlegeuse. But from what I remember, Beetlegeuse does specifically state that he is working for the Witch of Envy, aka Satella. So it's not like there's a Witch of Sloth out there that he's actually that's what who's who he's actually loyal to, and it's not Satella. Right. So. Which gives precedence to the idea that, yes, all the witches are just, all the witch cultists are just uh, worshipping Satella and not any of the other witches. I mean, for all we know, the Sin Archbishops may not even know what she looks like or, you know, just are being, t you know, Whoa. told by Satella or in this case, each individual personality what to do. It's... I mean, it's pretty heavily implied based on how Beetlegeist was acting that they don't know Satella. They've never met her. They've never, like, really had any direct interaction with her. They just receive the gospel and decide to spread her word, essentially. Right. Um, as far as knowing, like, what she looks like, though, basically everyone knows what she looks like. That's why the whole prejudice against Amelia is even a thing, is just because there's natural prejudice, uh, prejudice against half-elves in general just because Satella was a half-elf, but there's extra prejudice against Amelia specifically because Amelia so closely resembles Satella. Right. Well. And then that led to this new intro slash outro. I'm pretty sure it's the new intro at this point because they didn't... It could be either, based on the way the like tone and song is. I think it's actually more fits as an ED, but we'll have to see going forward where they actually put it. Right. But there are a few things in here that caught my attention. Uh, for one, there's a scene like uh, this. The big one that like really caught my attention was the elf girl um there's a scene in the intro or whatever this is uh 
where it essentially looks. So this is another scene, actually, before I get to that. It seems like we're seeing the real world, like somehow yeah. or another. We're, gonna we're seeing get back where to Subaru, Subaru. like the Japan Subaru came from. Yeah, Subaru's original world. To some extent this season. But then the big thing also. Uh, Miss Disembowel over there. Uh, right. Actually, spacing her name. Um, Let's not but, forget Subaru just walking past all of its previous deaths. That's some serious imagery. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with the elf girl, there's a, specifically a frame in here. It's really brief that caught my eye where you see like a dozen or so of her in what more or less seems like a clone factory. Yeah, I did. I which, saw that too. Yeah, I remember that one. I know what you're talking about. Which to me heavily implies that some one of the big secrets to the sanctuary is basically that Ra's Wall is like making half elves to try to essentially make Amelia equivalent, where he's basically he's trying to Essentially, whether through through breeding or cloning, he's trying to just basically just keep making half elves until he gets it right. Is yeah. what it implies to me. I mean, he did have some pretty sus moments in the first season where he was talking to Rom, and she, like, he was up to something. Like, he made it sound like there was something that he didn't want found out, and that very well could be the thing. He could be trying to make like the perfect ruler or the perfect Amelia or whatever. Could have sworn. Screw it. I'm just going to play it. <laughs> Fairly early on, it was like shortly after. I I'm pretty sure it was after he walked through all of his deaths. Yeah. I thought sure it was like right it. around there somewhere, but. Because that, what you're talking about is a big deal. There's... So I would like the still of that, and we will find it live. Because <laughs> we only do one take. <laughs> Pretty sure it's during this part. Yeah. Right there. There it is, yeah. <laughs> I was ready on that space bar. They couldn't stop me. <laughs> Even if it was only like three frames. They, they can't stop me. <laughs> yeah, this whole thing, like, to me, I immediately caught my attention and just made me think that something to do with the Sanctuary is more or less, like I said, breeding slash cloning program for half-elves. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll definitely have to see if there's more of her because we, we didn't catch a name just hey wait come back <laughs> mm -hmm. so th th at least that's one less name for me to remember this week because come next week i'm gonna have this list and there's gonna be like three people on it that i distinctly remember you know so it it's all over for me in the in the name department we're just screwed <laughs> age is the name guy don't look at me to remember names i'm gonna be referring to them as you know roommate b <laughs> <laughs> that guy over there you know who i'm talking about <laughs> we've been over this you're the entertainer i'm the database and my entertainment skills are questionable at best we know that talking head at best entertainer maybe you know we'll see you know it's it's fine you know but hopefully some people enjoy my nonsense i'll take i'll take some i'm never gonna expect all if anybody expects all they're crazy you remember, it can make you some of the money. It can make you so much money you'd never even need it, need it anymore. But if it's not making you all the money, then why the fuck are you bothering? Oh yeah, if it's not, if it's not, it's it's all or nothing, man. If you know, why make some people happy or entertain some people? If it's not everybody, we're not doing this. We we should just stop. 
well, you know, as we're getting started here, we should just stop. We're not entertaining everybody, you know, we don't have 8 billion views and, you know, 8,000 8, hundred billion subscribers we, we should just stop you know making up all the numbers here it's late and i'm tired we had a long ass day but we got the recording and that's all that matters <laughs> yeah, this is definitely our latest recording so far just shit kept happening yeah i, I got state of california with the missions test so that, that was that took up 90 percent of my day but we, we got it in that, that's all that matters we got it in and it'll be up in time so you, uh, you can always crazy. count on us to be there and also phrasing, yes, it was up in time. It was long and hard, but we got there. And we could do several more quagmire puns, but I think I'm reaching my quota for those, yeah? Like, three more this week? Well, the new week started today. How, how have I already used all those up? I wasn't even here today. I don't know where she gets her data about the things that I discuss, but it's starting to scare me. But anyway, back on topic here. Yeah, we've got possible clone factory, Amelia's test being borked by Subaru, apparently. We'll see what happens with the Witch of Greed and her witch factor and whether or not she, it'll be on store shelves, you know, starting next year. But so there's a lot of questions to be answered, and I'm interested to see what they do with that since they introduced all kinds of new stuff in like the last minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> And foreshadowing for several other characters that were just, you know, we got to see silhouettes and maybe, like, hair color and stuff like that. So there's stuff coming this season. So it, it's going to be interesting what they do with uh, how far they get in this first uh, this first core here. Yeah, I really I don't have much else to say. Like, I'm probably going to have to go back and rewatch these episodes at some point here either like after we've watched the third episode or maybe before then probably watch them in sub <clears throat> Good, because there is certain things that I think I've missed but for the most part I think we've got pretty much everything there is to say out of these first two episodes yeah um the first episodes of seasons are probably usually unless it's coming uh, unless like the end of the previous season was like a super cliffhanger or something which that that happens sometimes but you know really it's uh, really rare for yeah. seasons to end in a cliffhanger unless it's a two part a two, it's unless it's like a two core season or like they already have the next season greenlit and being made like technically like that's kind of the way uh, overlord was the end of right. season two was a bit of a cliffhanger because season three was already confirmed and like half done by the time season two was even finished airing. Right. So, you know, that's just usually how that stuff's written. So it'll be, I'm interested. Like it's, I'm interested to see where this goes and I'm into it. So that's all that really matters, I guess. So hopefully we can get something that's good. What, what I consider <laughs> good. I mean, like, like I mentioned in, in our intro, like I, my my standards for most entertainment are fairly low, and I'd rather just be pleasantly surprised by something and say, yeah, that's about what I expected, and I don't, like, regret spending time with something, you know. If it gets to that point, then I'm, then I'm like, a little bit upset. But what are you going to do about it? Sometimes you got to, you got to watch shit to appreciate the actual good stuff, so. It, it's the same thing I personally always advocate for. You have to watch the good and the bad the worst thing to watch is just something that's boring. Mm -hmm. Even if something is bad, there is still reasons to watch it. And there's, there's still even potential enjoyment to have out of it. Yeah. I mean, I've watched quote unquote bad shows or bad movies or whatever before. And there's, there's always going to be those stereotypical things that some people enjoy this bad stuff. Some people enjoy this bad stuff, but you know, sometimes there's, there's hilarious moments or just like seriously hilarious one-liners and things that are, considered bad just because of what's happening so you just got to take it as it is so we'll see what yeah, happens i don't think this i don't think re-zero like is going to be anything that i'm gonna like regret watching or say wow uh i completely horrendously disagree with this story choice or something like i i very rarely do that but if something really irks me i will say so but for, for the most part I, I try to find the good and stuff than the bad but if there's bad i'll say so yeah, it's rogues like and torgast <laughs> yeah it's kind of the same with me i generally i prefer 
to avoid being especially vocal about things that I find problematic with shows, but I'm very, I'm still also very critical of most shows. So like, even though I don't necessarily say it, I'm still noticing most of the things that are wrong. And I'm, that's just part of how I go through things. I am very analytical. That's one of the reasons why I remember so much about most of these things. And one of the reasons why I know so much about writing and anime tropes, game tropes, game design, all that stuff, even though I've very rarely actually studied it myself. I have just spent so many years with such an analytical viewpoint on them that I just know a lot about them purely through experience. Yep. Just like me in sports. That's that's the way I was with sports growing up. So this that's how I take most sports things. So look forward to my sports rants. They're coming before the Super Bowl. I'm gonna have one. So if, not not that there I don't know how much crossover there is between just general sports stuff and, and anime and gaming stuff, but you know, if you're into sports, there, there's a sports rant coming here at some point. But I think we got it. I think we're good. Um I gotta stop saying um. Just could you could you strike those? No? I just have to get could better? You're telling me I have to get better at that. You're crazy. Do I look like a guy who's not lazy? I have to get unlazy. Ugh. She could you, she works me to the bone. It's it's unbelievable. Could you stop saying um, I suppose? I suppose. Maybe I should just start saying that. <laughs> oh man, I shouldn't start saying that. Maybe every time I want to say that, I should just think of Aqua and it'll immediately say something else. <laughs> See, there's something bad I can say about... Uh, there it is again. There, there's something bad I can say about the Sakai Quartet is Aqua. I don't like Aqua. There you go. Just straight up. I don't like her. <laughs> Aqua is the worst girl. Like, there's a lot of people who try to advocate for Aqua, but she ha well, she does have a few good moments here and there. She is by and large one of the biggest like put offs to Konosuba as a whole in my opinion it's basically it's her and just how sexual the show can get are like the main two things that drive people away from the show yep I mean like you said she has her moments and she's kind of an important part of the story obviously but man just Aqua <sighs> just man anyway ladies and gentlemen we got a little off track there, but who doesn't love a little shit posting from time to time, which will happen. But we'll be back next week with another episode of this Three Zero Season Two, Episode Three. Hopefully, we'll get some answers. Will Amelia wake up, or is Subaru now his own best girl? This is just getting ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sure she'll wake up and be a part of the episode because if she's not. That'll be something I I will peg against this if Amelia doesn't get her actual story progression that she needs in character I mean, development. Not that I think she, that's going to happen, but come on. <laughs> either. I really only see that going two ways. Either she wakes up and somehow finds her way to the sanctuary still. Or. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this current timeline is another dead end. Either something's going to happen, Subaru's going to die, it's going to reset, and he's not going to take the amulet next time. Right. This could very well be a death thing with him taking the amulet. Like, well, let me just put this back on Amelia, and yeah. <laughs> let's, just, let's just take that one again one more time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube and beyond, we appreciate you stopping by and hanging out in the dojo. As always, it's been fun. If you enjoy our content, like, subscribe, follow, mash your face against the keyboard. I don't know what it is. I hate asking for it, but apparently you're supposed to. So we appreciate any and all support you give us. And we'll be back next week with more of this. And uh, we're going to be working on the Ruby. Uh, 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 with some uh. The Ruby yeah, mid-season, no like, super discussion show that's going to probably take at least an hour and a half that we're going to be talking and dissecting that first half of ruby uh volume eight there the first half of it because it, it's coming and that hiatus has been grinding at me that's that's why we have to do this so i don't thoroughly lose my mind in between stream days so we'll be back next week with the next episode of ReZero and more madness and stuff so whenever you are have a good morning evening afternoon whatever it is for you as you watch and we'll catch you next time